EMZT Radio is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audio download and a free 30-day trial at audibletrial.com slash EMZT. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Welcome to another episode of EMZT Radio. I'm Bane Hellborn with my partner, the infamous NJ, and we have special guest host, Brittany Blanton. Welcome, Brittany. Thank you for having me. Yes. So it's Women in Horror Month, and you're our special guest for today because you are an actress, writer, director, and you got a whole ton of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, I got a quite a few things going. Yeah. Is there is there anything you can talk about? Yeah, definitely. Okay. There's yeah. too much to talk about, actually. <laughs> Well, let's talk about you. Let's uh, tell us what uh, what interesting projects you've got going on. Um, right now, I'm my main focus currently is casting my next short film, which is called Ambrosia. Um, it centers around two characters, a couple, and they decide to venture into the woods, and then it doesn't go as expected. Ah. Um, yeah. It never does, does it? <laughs> I was like, that sounds very vague and just open but I didn't want to give a lot away since it's a short well but, yeah <laughs> so, how, how long is the short um well it's 11 pages so hopefully it'll be under 10 minutes is what I'm hoping for nice but, yeah so I'm excited about that we're casting I got a lot of great auditions in so just kind of going through and trying to pick out which one vibes best with my character ideas Ooh. So, uh, are you starring in it too, or directing? I am directing, and possibly I have been thinking about taking on a role. So nice, yeah. yeah. And so this is going to be like a creature. There's going to be a creature in it, so uh-huh. I might be. Able- play one of those characters I haven't decided. It's just been talked about with me in a uh, concept meeting with a production company I'm working on this with. Oh, sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited about it. <laughs> and then uh, have you heard that Blumhouse has released a new trailer for its new psychological horror, Ma? Yes, it looks amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, of course, the story is, uh, so Octavia Spencer, who was in uh, The Shape of Water, she's a lonely woman who agrees to let a group of teenagers party at her house. Of course, what could possibly go wrong teenagers partying in someone else's house? (laughs) And uh, Ma is not as nice as we thought. (laughs) So so uh, that looks like fun. Did we mention that Shudder is doing a free 30-day uh, viewing or of their service for Women in Horror Month? So mm. they have a lot of goodies going on. I love Shudder. Mm. Yeah. I Shudder. Oh, because I've got it on my phone now because they, they don't, they're not on, uh, they're not on PlayStation. I, I have PlayStation. I used to have it on there. Uh-huh. Hmm. Yeah, it's like it it's like uh, a lot of the horror streaming services are not on sh- on PlayStation anymore. PlayStation seems to be getting phased out. <laughs> they have that on Roku, right? Yes, yes. Because I've gotten on there before. Oh, okay. Boy, camp on there. Yeah, I need to. I need to get Roku. Just get it over with. Comes <laughs> with um pre-downloaded on there. Yeah, I didn't download it, so it was nice. They have a couple different horror movie channels for you to get into. Oh, yeah. I also, uh, what did I download on? Well, PlayStation, what did I get was, uh, oh, Pluto TV, I downloaded on PlayStation. And they have a a, a 24-7 horror channel. Cool. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> a lot of fun. But then um, for some reason, Pluto keeps booting me off. You know, I get booted off in the middle of a movie. I'm like, ah. Oh. Yeah, well, you're able to go back and pick it up, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
the second so, you got booted off and it was just like, nope, no more. You don't get yeah. this by Yeah, I, I think it has something to do with my internet connection, so, yeah. But I already upgraded my internet, so I can't go any higher. <laughs> That's how I feel. I'm like, we got the most, but I still have problems when I'm upstairs in our bedroom or yeah. downstairs in the garage, the complete opposite direction. But yeah. yeah, it just seems to take up a lot of bandwidth, and that's where you get kicked off if you don't have enough bandwidth. So so anyway, um, hey, Matt, say hello. <laughs> I'm alive. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Uh. Did you have any news you wanted to talk about today? No, not really. No. I, haven't, I haven't found much, as you can tell. Yeah, that's, yeah I didn't find much <laughs> either. It's been a Sunday. slow news week. Slow news week, yeah. Other than I put out two podcasts <laughs> just a couple of days ago. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah, one was three hours because it featured a, a local um, ghost tour guide. Oh, cool. So I recorded, uh, I went on one of her tours and I recorded the whole tour. So that was like almost two hours. <laughs> That'd be really cool though. They let you do that. Take yeah. It Very cool. Yeah. And uh, we even have EVP sessions. You should take a listen. You can hear the, the spirits talking to us through the spirit box. It's hilarious. <laughs> I am, um, me and a lady, I used to work at a tanning place um, when I was younger after high school. And like she came in, her name was Joy. She's the sweetest lady, and we both got to talking and how we were both into like the paranormal and ghosts and stuff. And so her family actually used to go out to cemeteries and go ghosting. So they invited me a couple of times, and it was really cool. We got um, she brought her little um, grandson. He was a, I mean, he was little, but old enough to come. Okay. And he, we didn't get much until like he started talking. Um, in like the children's part of the cemetery and he got this like little boy voice oh. talking on this thing man that's so old but then we actually did one in the tanning place where I worked because we both were talking about how creepy we felt in there like if we were by ourselves or whatever but we got <laughs> kind of cool things we got lots of orbs and stuff and we got some voices so it was really cool yeah it's yeah. I love that stuff I know and... it's not, I haven't gone in forever yeah yeah, um, where I live, we have the London Bridge. Okay. So it's uh, it's been reported there's been lots of uh, figures. You can see people walking on the on the bridge, like uh, like couples or supposedly Jack the Ripper is walking on the bridge. <laughs> that would be so cool. Uh, but uh, that only happens like really really late at night. You know, like yeah. uh, two three in the morning. I feel like with bridges, that's usually the case. We yeah. had like one growing up by our house called Crybaby Bridge, and it was, it was in a very creepy place. It was like back in the woods, and there was like no nothing around, no houses, and the trees came up like around the bridge, one of those type of things. Mm-hmm. And then I think that people, it was just the squeaking of the bridge. I don't think, but there was some story I can't remember now, but. Yeah, something with bridges, and it has to be super low, I feel. Mm. Well, plus, this is historic. I mean, uh, this lady, Kim, she does uh, uh, research, historic research on the bridge and about where it was in London and uh, how people used to be thrown into the river, the Thames, after they killed them, you know, for punishment, and how all their bodies were stuck in the river and it would slap up against the the stones. So that's how residual hauntings happen is because okay. the the bodies and and everything is in, imprinting itself on the bridge. So I mean, yeah. yeah, I was like, that's, wow. That's kind of a, uh, I don't want to say cool cuz it's like sad and everything, but it's yeah. an interesting history for sure in the bridge. Yeah. That, I found, yeah, a lot of the stories are very tragic. I mean, the way they, they did the punishments, especially the beheadings, you know, where they put uh, heads on spikes. <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, well, I was like... People want to stay in line more, like, well, I don't want that to happen to me. Yeah. I mean, what they did to William Wallace alone, is, he should be on there because I would be pissed off if they did what, what they did. Because yeah. uh, they, they didn't just... they didn't just hang him. I mean, they hung him until he passed out. Then they knocked, they cut him down. 
then they disemboweled him and cut him into pieces and mailed some of his pieces all over town and then threw the rest in the river. <laughs> like, what? Wow. I'm really glad we've come a long way since then. <laughs> Everybody, yeah. all, like yeah. our hunters and stuff. It was the most it was the most brutal thing I ever heard. But you know, the the English were pissed at William Wallace at the time, so <laughs> Oh well of course of course they would be. I mean that was the original <laughs> Scottish independence movement for crying out loud. Yeah. But I mean he went through such a brutal uh, death. I was like, Wow, he should be haunting the bridge. <laughs> Maybe he is. It's just too late for anybody to be up to notice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's well the bridge is on a main road, so I don't know if he can be seen. Oh, okay. Yeah, cuz it's always busy even cuz it's my town is kind of a party town, so mm-hmm. everybody's up and causing ruckus. <laughs> <laughs> ruckus and fracas mm-hmm. and mayhem. <laughs> but like fun to live there or would you be does it get annoying? Well, I live outside of town, so um oh. I'm okay. I'm okay. But it's just funny how stupid people can get. And it's a spring break town. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have to stay out of town when spring break is going on. <laughs> it has to be insane. Yeah, it is. It's, it's crazy. So, anyway, anyone have any, any anything else they wanted to talk about before we go to our music break? Are we good? Okay, I think we're good. Yeah. All right. It's music time with EMZT Radio. Face those stormy nights. Unlace 
In this house, the doors say red rum, and every day is an excellent day for an exorcism. 
We have old friends for dinner, and we see dead people because sometimes we all go a little mad. So if you want to play a game, when you see the red balloon, be afraid, be very afraid, and whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Welcome to your worst nightmare, because in this house, we dig horror movies. Because this is EMZT Radio. EMZT Radio is brought to you by NordVPN, and I don't know about you guys, but I've had that call from the bank. I hate that call from the bank, and you know what call I'm talking about. It's that call that your information has been hacked, and somebody's trying to use it in another country. Well, like I said, I've had that happen to me before. NordVPN is a hack-proof encrypted tunnel for online traffic to flow. Nobody can see through the tunnel and nobody can get their hands on your internet data. NordVPN gives you peace of mind every time you use the public Wi-Fi, access your personal and work accounts on the road, or just want to keep your browsing history to yourself. You know, when, when you're talking with private browsing... But they have 5,100 servers in 62 countries, and that gets updated weekly. So, you know, you're hit with that Article 13 in Europe. Maybe you want to check out NordVPN before this happens, and uh, that way you can access an American server and not miss out on your favorite YouTubers, at least your favorite American YouTubers. There's no data logging, and they also have an extension for the Chrome browser, which is lightweight and user-friendly from the first click. I know a lot of you guys use Chrome out there. You definitely need to pick this one up. There's a 24-7 automatic support. Some of the best people in the world will take care of you in this. And you can do that through live chat or emails. You can have up to six simultaneous accounts, and there's even an automatic kill switch. Oh, yeah. You want to get around that great China firewall? This is the place for you to do it. And going to the Middle East, this will work too. It's compatible with most operating systems, including Windows, Mac, and Android. Double data encryption for increased anonymity. And I'm telling you folks, it's something you need, especially because you don't want to get that phone call from your bank going, oh yeah, by the way, uh, you know, you've, you've, been, you've been in Italy the last couple of days, haven't you? No. Onion over VPN servers, unlimited bandwidth. They accept all the major credit cards, PayPal, and Bitcoin. Dedicated IPs available on request and free security extras. You can try them right now, risk-free, 30-day money-back guarantee. And they've got that CyberSec suite and an ad blocker. Folks, this is something you definitely need to have. Click the link in the description right now and you can get up to three years worth of service. Hey everyone, this is Beaumont Bob from Bowling with Bobcat. You can listen to me live every Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern at sfvradio.com, where I'm bringing you the best of the worst in cheap booze, talking bum wine, beers, 40s, malt liquor, and more. Always featuring the latest and greatest in the world of drinking and entertainment, along with some special guests. So come on down and take a ride with Bum Wine Bob. If you can't be there live, you can always listen in the archives at bumwinebob.com. So sit back, relax, grab a drink, and enjoy. Cheers. What are you waiting for, huh? Hi everyone, this is Caridwin from Sugar Plum Suicide and you're listening to EMZT Radio. From the-line-up.com, nine extremely scary horror movies you need to see, according to Reddit. And they're all featuring female characters, so how appropriate is that? What better place than the depths of the internet to seek out the scariest horror movies that even die-hard fans are afraid to watch? Thanks to these threads and sub-threads, you don't have to worry about your co-workers judging looks when you mention your love of utter freak fests. The only thing you have to worry about is whether or not your picks are scary enough to make the cut of these extremely scary movies you need to see, according to Reddit. High Tension A modern classic, the French film High Tension turns the slasher genre on its head. A serial killer is after Alex and will stop at nothing to have her. Halfway through the movie, the identity of said killer is revealed, meaning the movie delivers on both the gore and the psychological drama. One Reddit user who saw the movie as a kid never forgot it. Quote, I never knew a movie could show that level of violence. It absolutely wrecked me. End quote. The Autopsy of Jane Doe. 
this movie freaked the fuck out of Reddit users and seasoned horror junkies. It seems as though Jane Doe had been brutally murdered, but her body shows little signs of torture. This father-son mortician team are about to embark on the most unsettling autopsy on screen since Alien. As the questions about Jane Doe's identity grow, so does the unrelenting terror. Yeah, I had said this one freaked me out too. A Tale of Two Sisters As long as you don't mind reading subtitles, as one Reddit user warns, K Horror's Finest is represented in A Tale of Two Sisters. Stay away from the American remake, which doesn't hold a candle to the original. What begins as typical evil stepmother tale quickly takes on new life as two sisters are reunited after one stint in a mental institution. Though theirs is a happy reunion, the girls find that they've got bigger monsters to deal with than a new stepmom. I didn't see this one. The Descent. I wasn't too thrilled with this one, but it still wasn't bad to watch. This British horror indie from 2003 is a permanent favorite of horror aficionados. I'm sorry it's not a favorite of mine, but it's okay. A group of girlfriends get together to go spelunking and to distract one of them from the recent loss of both her husband and child in a car accident. Sounds like a great idea, right? The claustrophobic parts of the film are more scary than the creatures in it, one user relates. Another writes, it's genuinely one of the best horror movies I've ever seen. The Wailing This movie fucked up my life for a while, one Reddit user warns. A series of brutal deaths under investigation in a rural village in South Korea seems to coincide with the arrival of a strange Japanese man. Users wrote that they too felt like they were cursed after seeing this movie. Another wrote, Fever Dream is a great way to describe it. I didn't see it. Session 9. This is one of my favorites. A group of enterprising guys are charged with the demolition of a condemned lunatic asylum. I think that's wrong. They weren't demolishing it. They were taking out the asbestos. That's what they were doing. Taking out the asbestos in the ceilings. Anyway, desperate for cash, they ignore the warnings from locals that the place is cursed. It's not long before the men feel as though they need to be committed. The film excels at being unnerving, one user wrote. Another said, it's my top recommendation for scary, non-slasher horror films. This is one of my favorites because the, these men are messed with psychologically by something that's not there. Possession. One of the strangest and most obscure horror movies ever made, Andrzej Zulowski, Possession, is infamous for actress Isabel Ajani's intense borderline insane performance. Her descent into madness as an adulterous wife is at once bone-chilling and blood-curdling. A walk home from the grocery store in Berlin subway turns into a scene of total and utter horror that sticks with you for good. The Canal This overlooked Irish horror movie is a fan favorite, making an appearance on Reddit over and over again as a controversial addition. A man named David believes his wife is having an affair. His anxiety is compounded by the discovery that a murder took place in his home, which he believes may be haunted. When his wife doesn't come home, David must investigate the forces of evil at work. That one was a really weird one. The Strangers The random home invasion strikes terror into the heart of all people, and the strangers milk that fear for all it's worth. Some claim this movie doesn't scare them. Nice try, we don't believe you. I didn't like being home alone for a long time after watching it, one user reveals. Another post-stranger's trauma was more intense. I spent the following month sprinting in the dark from my parked car on our driveway to my front door when returning home from work in paranoia. It creeped me out quite a bit. Makes me wary to answer the door. I've seen most of these movies on this list, and I'd say give it all a try. In fact, the ones the one I haven't seen, I'm going to try to take a look at. You are listening to EMZT Radio. We're thinking yeah. about smoking some dope, having a little premarital sex, and uh, not worry about getting slaughtered. The show that puts the story back into history. History is all about discovering the why. And I think that in that process, it's important to never take the story out of history making history come alive one episode at a time but this is a podcast on 
the American Revolution for this series and uh, all about a free country, so do whatever the hell you want. Visit themondayamerican.com to get more. Dive into the Monday American. Don't worry, we'll be gentle. EMZT Radio is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com slash EMZT. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. For you, the listeners of EMZT Radio Podcast, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. That's audibletrial.com slash EMZT. I'll swallow your soul! You are listening to EMZT Radio. Come and let your ears bleed. Welcome to Darkness. to the studio tonight, I bumped into an old friend. Nothing really strange about that, except that he's been dead for several years. <laughs> Reminds me of a song. The last time I saw Harry, his skin was gray and green. But enough of this entertainment. You've got problems of your own. But you don't know about that, do you? Well, he's very angry with you. He's decided to do it. Be careful, especially if you're walking to your car alone or riding in an elevator. Enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. <laughs> study in charm called Catch Kill. It's about two elderly sisters who run an antique shop in their home. Unfortunately, their once refined neighborhood has changed quite a bit. Poor dears, they're perfect targets for... But you'll see. <laughs> Anybody here? Uh, Miss Agnes? Miss Josephine? Coming! Coming! Ah, afternoon, Miss Agnes. Oh, Officer Lyons. What a pleasant surprise. Who is it, Agnes? Well, it's that nice patrolman. Come to pay us a visit. Oh, yes. Oh, the new one on the beat. And so handsome. <laughs> ah, Miss Josephine. Can we stay for tea? Uh, I made some apple turnovers. Maybe some coffee. Oh, yes, do stay. It's so cold out. I don't know how you can stand this weather. Oh, well, thank you kindly. Uh, but I only stopped by to see that you were safe. Oh, isn't that considerate? Yes. Officer Kenyon did the same thing. Poor dear. Oh, that's all right, Joe. I'll never get over it. Shot him. Just like that. What's this world coming to? Oh, please. Be cautious, Officer Lyon. Oh, I can take care of myself. And that's the two of you that need protection. Oh, rubbish. Oh, we've never had a speck of trouble here. Not in 52 years. 51, dear. 52. Father built the house in 27, but we didn't move in until 28. Yes, but I'm still correct. You are. <clears throat> Anyhow, uh, please make sure all the doors and windows are secured. Uh, you don't want any unexpected guests. Well, why would anyone want to harm either of us? Well, I don't know. 
But them gold watches in the front window, well, they can attract the wrong element. If we don't display them, how can we get customers? I may be stepping out of line, but... Ladies, this neighborhood isn't the same as it was. We don't have your kind of genteel society anymore. These days, it's full of junkies and thugs. We know. And I'm sure you could sell this house and move to a nicer neighborhood. You sound just like our niece, always telling us to move. Well, we're not. We like it here. I'm not going into a rest home. And neither am I. We fully intend to stay. And we'll thank you not to meddle in our affairs. I, I didn't mean to. Uh... You think we're two doddering old ladies? Unable to take care of themselves. Well, we're certainly not. Oh, dear. I have a headache. Oh, now, Joan. <laughs> I, I would never move. Now, you see, you've upset her. I, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Oh, indeed, you should. Now, now you'd better go. Uh, yes, ma'am. I don't like him anymore. Neither do I. Next, to be telling us what to eat. Oh, police are so meddlesome today. Always interfering. Well, we'll go on about our business like, like nothing happened. Of course. Aggie. Yes, dear? Can I feed the fish next time? Isn't it your turn anyway? No. I'll trade with you. You can make the cherry cobbler. All right. Oh, goodness. There's something about feeding you. Well, I enjoy it. You're such a good sister. Oh, you fiddlesticks. You always could twist me around your little fingers. Aggie, when can I do it? As soon as the opportunity presents itself. Now, don't stand around lollygagging. There's work to be done. Change the display in the window. Oh, yes. I'll put out the gold coin. Right. Oh, there's such an eye catcher. I'm sure someone will stop. My, my. Hello? Hello, Aunt Aggie? Oh, Carol. How are you, dear? Fine. Is everything all right? Never better. You sure? Oh, yes. Joe and I are just going to rearrange the window display. Did Mr. Newmont call? Who? Mr. Newmont, the real estate agent. Oh, yes. Did you make an appointment? Why should we? Because he has a client interested in your property. I'm certain of that. Aunt Aggie, I don't mean to meddle, but... But you are, dear. Now, Sister and I are not selling. Just talk to him. Carol, I know you mean well, but we are quite firm. It's not the money. It's your safety. Is he starting again? Uh, just a moment, dear. I'll handle it. Give me the phone. Now, don't, don't, don't be rude. Carol, dear, uh, we've told you before we're not leaving this house and going into some old lady's home. Please cease this discussion. If you wish. That's better. Come see us for tea. I'll try. Any time this week, dear. Bye-bye. Oh, I'm glad you weren't impolite. Once a lady, always a lady. Customer Joe. Pity sakes, we'll never have tea. I'll get it. Good afternoon. Can I help you? Now, hiya. How you doing? I noticed the stuff in the window. Uh, let me look at them watches, huh? Oh, of course. Uh, which one? Oh, the big one. Uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, it's a beauty. Belonged to my father. Nice. Solid gold case? Naturally. All our watches are gold. How much? $350. Uh-huh. And uh, the small one? $450. <whistles> that's a lot of bread. Pardon? Uh, very expensive. Oh, not really. There are real rubies uh, on this cover. And I don't think it's overpriced. Maybe. Uh, you run this shop alone? No, with my sister. Uh-huh. Perhaps I could show you something more moderate. This one with the sapphire is appraised at $350. But I can let it go for $200. Oh, it looks pretty good. Um, I saw some coins. Uh, looked interesting. They gold, too? Oh, yes. Well, let me see some. Uh, I'm looking for uh, a gift. Oh, how thoughtful. Let me get them. Oh, here we are. Nice. Uh, just the two of you run this shop? Yes. Joe and I have lived alone for years. No pets? Oh, no. We're allergic to animals. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I can't choose. I like everything here. Oh, well, you know, so many people say that. Mm, so I think I'm going to take the whole lot. <gasps> don't move, lady. Oh, oh, don't shoot. Smart. Get your sister. Oh, uh, jo jo Josephine, would you come out here, please? What is it? Oh, oh, my. Do as I say, or else. Oh, yes, yes. 
Get a bag. Start putting the stuff in it. Move! Even the coins we have in the pantry, Josephine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, them too. Oh, no. We all go in together. I ain't falling for that one. You shouldn't have said anything. I'm sorry. Where you got them? Oh, please, don't hurt us. Just give me the coins, huh? Oh, Aggie, do something. Uh, let's have the money. Here, in this box. Give it. If you insist. Uh, uh, my eyes, my eyes. Uh, my face is on fire. Get his pistol. Uh, I have it. Uh, what'd you do? My eyes. Give him a damn towel, Joe. Uh, isn't that Candler Ghost Spray Marvel? Oh, yes. I love the name. Nay. It sounds so fine. Oh, my eyes. I may go blind. Too bad. Look, I didn't mean any harm. Fiddlesticks. You would have robbed us and maybe killed us. And you're going to get what you deserve. Hey, don't call the cops. I'm a two-time loser. This trip could be for good. Oh, we never call the police. Huh? Josephine and I dispense justice right here, precisely. Now, uh, let me think. Assault with a deadly weapon, grand theft, and rudeness. That's plenty. Look, don't point that at me, huh? Oh, I wouldn't shoot you. Not yet. How do you plead? Guilty? Uh, yeah, I guess. Therefore, you must pay the penalty. Down those steps. What? Do as she says. Down the cellar. No, listen, uh, can't we talk this over? Move. I know how to use this. Okay, okay. This way, young man. What the hell is that? A pond where Joe keeps the fish. Get in, please. You crazy? Get in. It's only up to your way. Uh, no way. I said get in. Hey, yeah, yeah. Don't point that. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll get in. Jeez. Now what? Just wait. Hey. Oh. Hey. Something bit me. Jeez. 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 Oh, no. They're eating me alive. Oh, oh, oh. Weren't they hungry? Oh, yes. You know, we didn't even ask his name. Well, well maybe we'll, we'll find a wallet when we clean out the pot. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like we did with the others. You remember that Arthur Bedford? Oh, wasn't he a horror? Oh, he pushed you against the brake front. I still have the bruise. Oh, look. The piranha are gnawing at his head. They love brains. So full of protein. Well, show's over. <sighs> All too soon. I wish they wouldn't eat so fast. Shall we have tea? Yes. And it's my turn to pour. <laughs> Markham girls are no shrinking violets, are they? Feed the fish, indeed. Well, time for a commercial message. Don't go away. On second thought, why not slip into the kitchen for a bite? <laughs> Markham girls had cooked up for her. <laughs> Another petty four, dear? No, thank you, Aunt Joe. I know you don't want to discuss this. Well, then I... let's 
not. We haven't had a peaceful tea in days. Customers arrive at the worst times. But just the other day, this nice man wanted to take almost everything. But we wouldn't come down on the price. And he left us. You haven't sold anything in months. Nine months and 17 days, to be exact. This isn't the kind of neighborhood to... Aunt Joe, watches and coins only attract thieves. We've never been robbed. Yes, I can't understand that. Aunt Aggie, I I would like you to consider... Absolutely not. We were raised here, and we shall pass on from here. Father said we should never sell our home. Precisely. Things have changed. It's not the same. Oh, if anything happened to either of you, I'd never forgive myself. We can take care of ourselves. And we have that wonderful chemical spray to protect us. Oh, my. I don't think there's much left. I'll buy you another. Why not, too? Oh, uh, just in case. Good thought. Oh, I'm going to be late for the hairdresser. Are you seeing your young man this evening? Yes. We'd love to meet him, dear. Oh, now, Joe, why should she bring her bow to see two old biddies? I'd love you to meet Charles. Why not Sunday for tea? Oh, wonderful. Oh, this is too exciting. We can use the good silver. And the lace tablecloth. Oh, yes. Now, now, screw, screw, screw. Young lady, you must look your best for your Prince Charming. I'll bring the spray for you on Thursday. In the meantime, please be careful. Oh, don't fret, dear. We'll stay inside and feed the fish. <laughs> Polishing the silver, I'll get it. Anybody here? Coming. Hello. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, those watches, the ones I seen in the window, they run? Perfectly. They real gold? 24 carat. That one belonged to my father. That's so. How much? Well, it's worth $350, but you can have it for 200 Expensive. Our gold coins are, are more reasonable. Yeah? Well, let me show you. There we are. Now, those are double eagles, and those are commemoratives. Solid gold. Sold to the gent with the switchblade. <gasps> no noise, I'll cut your head off. Oh, don't, don't, don't hurt me. You, you can have everything. No kidding. Call your sister. Call her. Joe. Joe. Please, come here for a moment. All right. Oh, no. Stand over there. Try anything, and I'll put this in her eye. Clean out the case. That's it. Even the gold coins that we have in the back? Oh, Joseph. <laughs> them, too. Well, why did you tell him? I'm sorry. Where you got them? In, in the pantry. Go ahead. The two of you. Move it. Here. <laughs> Guess I hit the jackpot. You certainly did. Oh, my eyes. I can't breathe. Take his knife. I'm blind. I'm blind. Club him, Joe. Club him. Oh. Wake up. Wake up, you. Oh, what's going on? You're captured. Oh, hey. Oh, no. You won't get away. Untie me, huh? I won't bother you no more. Oh, indeed. Threaten us with a knife, will you? Oh, don't be too harsh, Aggie. Did you see the size of that blade? I demand punishment. The firing squad. Or, or the electric chair. I can't decide. Who are you talking about? How you're going to be executed. You're dippy. Hardly. Can't we use the electric chair? I love to see the body jerk. Just like modern dance. Well, all right. But only if he can have a last meal. Uh, listen, don't fool around, huh? Oh, of course. He must have a final meal. Just like they do on death row. Uh, you're joking. This is a gag, huh? <laughs> Not at all. I'll get the cherry cobbler. Will you take tea with us? I just want to clear out of here. That's impossible. Here we are. My specialty. I'm known for it. And the cherries are fresh, not canned. I ain't hungry. Eat it, please. Just for me. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Untie me. <laughs> We're not that silly. 
Just undo one hand, Joe. Are you left-handed or right? Come on. I'll untie the right. Here's a fork. Now, doesn't that look nice? Homemade. Well. Go ahead. Hmm. Good. Real good. Tastes more like almonds than cherries, though. <coughs> oh, my mouth. It's on fire. <coughs> getting too expensive. Hmm. Good point. Well, grab his leg. <clears throat> Time to feed the fish. Aunt Aggie? Aunt Joe? Hello? Hmm. Must be in the kitchen. Hello? Strange. Oh, Terry Copper, my favorite. Just a bite. Don't. <gasps> you scared me. Don't eat that. All right. What are you doing here? I brought you the tear gas spray. Aggie, I can't do this alone. You've got to help me. He's so heavy. In a minute. What is she talking about? Don't go down there. Agnes, could you please give me a hand? What are you... Who is that man? Carol! Is he dead? Go upstairs, Carol. Oh, my God. You're going to drive him. He passed away. We've got to call the police. No, dear. That would cause problems. I'll tell her. We poisoned him. Cyanide. In the cobbler. You what? He was going to rob us. Now we're disposing of the body. I'll give you a hand, dear. Yes, yes. No. More. 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 A little more. Watch, dear. It's very exciting. The piranha are starved. The piranha? Of course. You're insane. You've got that. Not at all. It's an eye for an eye. You can't do these things. We must. The two of you promise me you won't leave the house. Where would we go? I'll be right back. What's wrong with her? Joe, I think she's going for the police. <gasps> oh, my. That means we'll have to put our final plan into effect. Yes. We'll be ready for them when they come... young lady. Ah, oh, Miss Collier. Is anything wrong at the Markham house? Please, you've got to come. Please. Oh, well, sure. It's horrible. Horrible. Oh, my Lord. Their house. Oh, no. Oh. It's an inferno. Aunt Peggy. Aunt Joe. Well, we're too late. Oh, what a pity. Oh, the sweet old ladies. What a terrible way to die. But after it was all over, well, they never found their bodies, or the watches, or the coins. That tells you something, or does it? Are they, or aren't they? Only the piranha know for sure. <laughs> Thank you.
Betty Caulfield starred as Agnes and Josephine Markham. Featured in the cast were Virginia DeAuria, Tom Allard, and Bill Ratner. Also heard were Joey DeAuria and Bob Farley. Sound patterns by David Surtees. Darkness is produced in Hollywood by Excalibur Enterprises. Now, until next time, this is your host, Claude, wishing you good night forever. <laughs> Keep calm and don't go swimming, don't have sex, don't smoke, don't drink, don't go out, don't split up, don't run from the killer. If you trip, get up and run and above all, turn on the stupid light before entering any room. Unless you do want to die. Just some friendly tips to save your life in a horror movie. From your friends at EMZT Radio.
Danger. The emergency destruct system is now activated. The Horror Gaming Report brought to you by That Tech Shop. Dot com. Head over right now to thattechshop.com and type in the code EMZT at checkout for 20% off of all items for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox. And now it's time for the Horror Gaming Report from Complex.com. 10 of the most evil women in video games. Villains, bosses, end guys, they're what drives us forward level after level and their inevitable defeat is what gets us to keep picking up the controller death after death. They are the plot devices that drive the engines of all truly memorable games. But what about the villainesses? The lady bosses that taught us how females can be far deadlier than the males. Maybe they made you toss your controller across the room in frustration or help to change your perception of women in general. Whichever one it was, this list We'll run down some of the video game's most dangerous lady bosses. Carmen San Diego. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? As far as video game lady baddies go, Carmen is pretty tame. She was more a glorified middle school teacher than anything else, but thanks to her, we learned the capitals of all the countries in South America and the real reasons behind the War of 1812 players spent over 20 years chasing the red trench coat and fedora wearing beauty around the world. Driving us forward was the hope of finally putting the head of Vile, the ring of international thieves, behind bars. Carmen kept us busy at Acme Detective Agency with a combination of gratifying puzzle busting and that sly come-hither glance over her shoulder. Dark Psalmus, Metroid Prime, it probably sucks to be born without a body to call your own. That must explain where all the latent she-rage comes from when talking about Dark Psalmus. The main antagonist throughout all the Prime series, Dark Psalmus is equal parts evil doppelganger, stolen hero DNA, Phazon, and space trash. One can only expect that she has a lot of self-esteem issues. She was born out of an explosion at the end of Metroid Prime and goes on to hound Samus Aran over the course of the entire Prime series. Armed with her own power suit and ability set that mimics Aran's, she challenged us every time we tangled. Dark Samus also managed to become queen of the space pirates for a time being, which is something that most guidance counselors agree is a sweet gig if you can get it. Sniper Wolf Metal Gear Solid. Let's see here. Product of unstable geopolitical turmoil? Check. Watching helplessly as family and loved ones are killed by U.S. sanctioned bombings? Check. Unquestionable thirst for revenge on the country that turned a blind eye and subsequently destroyed her life? Ding! Check. As sunny a portrait as that paints, Sniper Wolf is the only female member of Foxhound the organization that is attempting to take down the U.S. and eventually take over the world. This Iraqi Kurdistani lady, badass, actually ends up being one of the more noble villains in the game. Famed for waiting days or even weeks without moving to take out her targets, Sniper Wolf makes emotional connections with her targets before eventually assassinating them. She may have behaved nobly, but that is still some next-level psycho behavior. Alma Wade Fear. Fans of both FPS, first-person shooters, and horror survival couldn't get enough of Fear when it first came out. The only thing we got from this game were nightmares starring Alma Wade, the terrifying child bride of Satan. Anytime Japanese horror, psychic brainwashing, and jerky cut frame animation are combined, we are asking for a serious case of the heebie-jeebies. Alma has the ability to psychically force hallucinations on players, summon swarms of disembodied torsos, and phase through walls leaving behind only bloody footprints. Not one of the best habits a normal eight-year-old should pick up on the playground. Sophia Lamb, Bioshock 2 Is there anything scarier than an evil genius? Like the kind that don't get their own hands dirty, but manages to get the nasty stuff done by coercing and manipulating others. Sophia Lamb from Bioshock 2 is just that flavor of crazy. A psychologist turned revolutionary with a healthy pinch of sexy librarian, 
Sophia takes over as leader of the underwater city of Rapture after the events of the first Bioshock. She's convinced the inhabitants to embrace what she calls family collectivism, an ideological cult that values the greater good above all else. Sophia is just a hop, skip, and a jump from being a super foxy Charles Manson. I guess a psychologist turned cult leader makes more sense than you think. Alien Queen Aliens Look, it's 2012, and this toothy female is still populating new releases. Most recently is the highly anticipated upcoming Colonial Marines. She combines all of the deepest fears of the human condition. The dark, insects, contamination, and a swift, gory death. First popping up in the second Aliens movie in 1986, she's had dozens of digital incarnations over the years. The Hive Queen is the universal primal ID unleashed. She cares only about the propagation of her species and breeds a legion of warrior drones to get the job done. Biology sure can be a chest-busting, acid-spewing bitch sometimes. Shodan. System Shock. Old school, but she still makes the cut. System Shock may have been released back in 1994, but Shodan, sentient, hyper-optimized data access network, endures as a memorable she-villain all the same. A vast AI network tasked with the day-to-day operations of running a deep space mining station, players accidentally set her free to systematically slaughter, mutate, or cybernetically augment all humans on the station. A condescending, cold-blooded, single-purpose computer that insults players as insects and pathetic creatures of meat and bone. Yowza! When are we humans ever going to learn to never trust machines? Jacqueline Notla, Tomb Raider. It's no easy effort to be this much of a pain in the rear, but Jacqueline manages it with a certain effortless grace. As one of the displaced rulers of Atlantis turned corporate tycoon, Jacqueline was the antithesis of everything Laura Croft stood for in the Tomb Raider franchise. She was diabolically cunning and merciless in her goal of acquiring the artifacts that would bring about something called the Seventh Age. Jacqueline was the amazing female baddie because she embodied all of the elements that made the Tomb Raider series great. History, mythology, and fantasy. Also, she wore an awesome pantsuit that left room for her demon wings. GLaDOS. Portal. There hasn't been a more universally loved and embraced villainess in a long time since GLaDOS in the Portal series. Witty, passive-aggressive, quirky, and simultaneously discouraging... GLaDOS was like a private school tutor you didn't have to pay to make you feel dumb. Responsible for testing and maintenance at the Aperture Science Research Facility, she was also responsible for murdering the whole staff with a deadly neurotoxin. A bloodthirsty AI's work is never done. Often compared to HAL 9000, but with a better sense of comedic timing and signature choppy and endearing text-to-voice program, GLaDOS is our favorite computerized killing machine. Plus, what video game has ever gone on to have a successful post-gaming singing career? Sarah Kerrigan, StarCraft There is nothing more tragic than a fallen hero turned villain. It's one of the longest standing tropes in literature, film, and gaming. Most of the time, though, they aren't so wickedly hot. That's right, the biggest baddie of the ladies is Sarah Kerrigan, Queen of Blades, Once one of the most elite Terran psychic agents in the whole StarCraft mythology, she tragically gives her life at the closing of the first game. She's then reincarnated as the Zerg-human hybrid and goes on to take total control of the Zerg swarm. The depth, vulnerability, and complexity of the character is what makes Kerrigan queen baddie of them all. She combines all the traits of the bad girl, sexy, damaged, and evil. What other woman could overthrow the overmind of the Zerg Empire and threaten the entire universe with utter destruction. I'd call that marriage material right there. And you are listening to EMZT Radio. Dungeons and Dragons. Satan's Game. Your children, like it or not, are attracted in their weaker years to the occult, and a game like D&D fuels their imagination and makes them feel special while drawing them deeper and deeper into the bowels of El Diablo. This afternoon, the Dead Ale Wives Watchtower invites you to sit in on an actual gaming session. 
observe the previously unobservable as a hidden camera takes you to the inner sanctum of Dungeons and Dragons. Gallstaff, you have entered the door to the north. You are now by yourself, standing in a dark room. The pungent stench of mildew emanates from the wet dungeon walls. Where are the Cheetos? They're right next to you. I cast a spell. Where's the Mountain Dew? In the fridge, duh. I want to cast a spell. Can I have a Mountain Dew? Yes, you can have a Mountain Dew. Just go get it. I can cast any of these, right, on the list? Yes, any any of the first level ones. I'm going to get a soda. Anyone want one? Hey, Graham, I'm not in the room, right? What room? I want to cast... Magic Missile. The room where he's casting all these spells from. He hasn't cast anything yet. I am, though, if you'd listen. I'm casting Magic Missile. Why are you casting Magic Missile? There's nothing to attack here. I'm attacking the darkness. (laughs) (laughs) Fine, fine. You attack the darkness. There's an elf in front of you. Whoa! That's me, right? He's wearing a, a a brown tunic, and he has gray hair and blue eyes. No, I don't. I have gray eyes. Let me see that sheet. Well, it says I have. Well, it says I have blue, but I decided I wanted gray eyes. Whatever. Okay, you, you guys can talk to each other now if you want. Hello, hello. I am Galstaff, Sorcerer of Light. Then how come you had to cast Magic Missile? <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you guys are being attacked. Do I see that happening? No, you're outside by the tavern. Cool, I get drunk. <sighs> there, are, there are seven ogres surrounding you. How could they surround us? I had Morton Titan's Magical Watchdog cast. No, you didn't. I'm getting drunk. Are there any girls there? I totally did. You asked me if I wanted any equipment before this adventure, and I said no. But I need material components for all my spells, so I cast Mordenkind's Faithful Watchdog. But you never actually cast it. Roll the dice to see if I'm getting drunk. (sighs) Yeah, you are. Are there any girls there? Yeah. I did, though. I completely said when you asked me. No, you didn't. You didn't actually say that you were casting the spell, so now there's ogres, okay? Ogres? Man, I got an ogre slaying knife. It's got a plus nine against ogres. You're not there. You're getting drunk. Okay, but if there's any girls there, I want to do them. There you have it. A frightening look into America's most frightening pastime. Remember that it's not your children's fault that they're being drawn into a satanic world of nightmare. It's their gym teacher's fault for making them feel outcast when they couldn't do one single pull-up.
Chronicity, a state of prolonged duration, recurrent, habitual, chronic. A new mini series on chronic pain and illness by your friends Matt and Phil from Semi Intellectual Musings. We go beyond medical diagnosis to explore the often forgotten political, social, and personal sides. You'll hear stories from extraordinary people overcoming extraordinary challenges. Authors, entrepreneurs, volunteers, coaches, and caregivers. They are so much more than their diagnoses, yet each have found ways to persevere. You'll also hear some familiar voices from the indie podcast community. Showing that art, creativity, and passion are possible while living in chronicity. These stories and more starting April 1st at thesim.podbean.com. You're listening to EMZT Radio. Sinister Sisters. <laughs> Welcome to another Sinister Sisters. I'm Bane Hellborn with my sister, Scorpio Girl. The concept of the Scream Queen, the plucky young woman whose shriek is so piercing you cover your ears, is so important to Hollywood that they even have their own TV show in the States, an homage to the great horror films in the 70s and 80s. Horror movies are often the first step for young actresses building a career, and a glut of films after the success of John Carpenter's film put plenty of them on screen and in major roles. Over the years, the Scream Queen has morphed from simple eye candy and cannon fodder into a clever, tough, often victorious foe who earns the audience's respect, which once again can be directly traced back to Halloween. Not all Scream Queens are created equal, but we're celebrating them all, from A-listers who've made brief horror forays to B-movie legends who carved out a career in the genre and embodied what it means to be the ultimate final girl. Get your lungs ready and celebrate Scream Queens! <laughs> I put my hands up in the Woo! air like we, like we can see queen! it. Like we can see it. <laughs> This is part of our yeah. Women in Horror Month tribute. Yes, we thought, why not? The ultimate uh, ultimate woman in horror is the Scream Queen. Yes. She is the forerunner, the front face of all the movie posters. So uh, She is the audio. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, Scream Queens, when women were being portrayed in horror movies, they were seen as weak defenseless always the victim always and half nude always half nude because that's how you lure the killer big or the tits, monster big get tits. your boobies out 
but they were always used as like she said cannon fodder because they were they had to die because they were the ones that committed the sins that perpetrated their deaths. I mean, so. they dragged the movie out a little bit longer, yeah. right? Yeah. And there was some appeal to young, horny, pubescent teenage boys. Well, that's part of the movie So, rules. you know, it's, you gotta you yeah. gotta have those scream queens. But yeah, over yeah. time, these women have definitely marked... They became uh, more smarter. They're not so defenseless. Mm-hmm. Uh, badass. They're badass. Badass bitches. So, uh, Scream Queen happened because in the early films all they did was scream so but now scream queen is referring to the women who work in these horror movies and are not so defenseless i mean they'll scream yeah yeah but they all kick ass while they're doing it yeah so i'm doing the iconic well no we decided because our lists kind of morph together all right Yes. So we're just going to do iconic, popular. We're going to grab as many of these badass bitches we can find yes. and tell you a little bit about them. And maybe you guys, uh, the two listeners out there that are listening, <laughs> will appreciate <laughs> when you see a movie, you know, oh, hey, I didn't know that was her. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, starting off, we have the one who has been called the ultimate scream queen. Jamie Lee Curtis. Of course. Now, in 1978, when she was in Halloween, she, you know, is the one to outwit Michael Myers. Because, number one, she was set to live because she was a virgin. She didn't have a boyfriend, but she did smoke pot. (laughs) But she still got away. So, and then... She didn't inhale. She didn't inhale. (laughs) Right. Right. She didn't inhale. But yeah, no, she definitely set uh, the bar because of the fact that not just in one movie, but every Halloween movie, she she killed it. I mean, she... Well, no, because the early films, she was allowed to get away because she was a virgin. So, uh, but she's done some others. Uh, The Fog, Prom Night, Terror Train... She was in Halloween, too, because it was a follow-up to the first one. Mother's Boys, where she was a manipulative bitch trying to get her kids back. Uh, Halloween, H2O, 20 years later, that's when she's the headmistress of a private school, and Michael comes and finds her. Virus, where she was uh, a complete kick-ass beating a infected... uh, computer system and then halloween resurrection but also she was in the remake of halloween and laurie strode is not so defenseless she's more of she took more the ellen ripley way of weapons planning uh, uh, a safety regiment um so Gordy Reaver better be on one of our lists. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz all so, I think back is yeah, she So Jamie Lee Curtis has mostly in her early days been the girl who is allowed to get away because she was virginal, because she was a victim, but then she sort of turned it around a little bit. And now that she's older, she's worried about your gut rot. <laughs> Go Activia. <laughs> But she's the ultimate, ultimate scream queen. Yeah. Give it to her. Yeah. All right. This is one of my all time favorites because this woman has played so many different characters and has killed it. But Tony Coletti. I mean, I get goosebumps when I know she's going to be in a film that I'm going to watch. Uh, the Aussie actress isn't primarily known for horror, but if you've ever seen her in Fright Night, Krampus, The Sixth Sense, or her terrifying turn in the surprise hit Hereditary, you know she belongs on this list, especially thanks to her unnerving performance. And spoiler alert, that wall crawl, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> I swear to Bob, there was not one easy scene in in that film, uh, Hereditary, is what Tony Coletti told Entertainment Tonight. Uh, she said, I knew it was going to be heavy, but there was just no letting up. Oh, my God. I mean, she can take a character and morph it into this what the 
fuck was that? Yeah. But yeah, definitely watching her in Hereditary. Um, Fright Night, I didn't watch her in. Of course, the, Krampus. The remake, Fright Night. I didn't watch the remake, Fright Night. That's what I obviously meant. But, okay. you know, you guys with, uh, uh, what is it, ESP out there can read my mind. <laughs> um, but yeah, Sixth Sense playing uh, the kid's mom. Mm-hmm. I love when Who she's Who didn't all, have a clue that she, she was that way. Yeah. I, I love her see, her scene, though, when she's like, look at this face. <laughs> is this face upset? And you're like, ah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, she, in that movie, Hereditary, I'm not a big fan because it didn't, I mean, this is for another subject. It didn't give too much, but the character, oh, that wall crawl, though. Oh, Shit. my God. Shit. It's right up there with the spider walk. From Exorcist. Oh. Yeah, it's right it, It's up there. creepy. You guys need to see this just to watch her do that. And also what she did to her neck. Remember? Uh, stop it. Stop it. Yeah. Stop it. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I'm glad she's on this list because she really can do a scream queen. Yeah. Who do you got? Okay. We have uh, Jamie Lee's mom, Janet Lee. Of course. Come on. Psycho. The famous famous shower scene only because norman was tempted by her so his mother came and took care of her i mean but that scream though that actual scream yeah with that and she just she keeps on screaming the blood's coming she's still screaming which you might not know was actually chocolate sauce running down well i mean come on black and white I mean, very creative. It was very lifelike. It looked it looked real because chocolate sauce has almost a vis. It has a little bit of viscous fluid in it, so it looked pretty real in the black and white. So, all right, yeah. I've got Naomi Watts. Yes, um, Watts became a household name by appearing in the blockbuster remake of The Ring and its sequel. Still, that movie haunts me today, yes. but we won't go into it. But she first established her horror bona fide by starring in The Shaft and Children of the Corn 5. Yes. Four? Four. 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 Um, so, I mean, she she's good. I mean, I'm sure there's many other horror films that I'm missing, but the Ring one was... It was terrifying. Very terrifying. And she did so well being that heroine in that. It it gave nightmares. Oh, still to this day, I am haunted. Yeah. What do you got? Ingrid Pitt. Ooh, who is Ingrid Pitt? She's, uh, she was in a lot of the Hammer horror films of the 70s. And uh, she mostly played Lady Vampires. Oh, so this is, uh, she's British, right? She's British, yes. Of course she is. But she always played uh, the bad guy. (laughs) Heck yeah. And then, of course, why? Because she had really big tits, and she could be really seductive. So she's on the other side where she's playing the villain. Yeah, but still, you know, it seems like she killed it to be pretty famous in the 70s. Yeah, she was... And in Britain. She was in uh, a lot of the Hammer Horror films as the vampiress. So, yeah, she definitely belongs on the list because she went the other way. She wasn't a victim. She She was was the monster. She was the predator. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have someone that might shock you all, and that is Jessica Biel. Yes. Stepping into one of horror's most iconic roles would be a tough task for anyone, but (laughs) Biel acquitted herself well as the eventual heroine in the Texas Chainsaw remake. Uh, Despite it being her first major movie role, she has since compared the film experience to that of her Emmy-nominated role on The Sinner. Um, explaining to Gold Derby, she said, you had to keep that level of fear and confusion and energy so high that it had to continue throughout the entire process. Um, I barely remember watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, Remake. but I do remember her in it. Yeah. So, um, you could tell the whole time she was freaked out. She was terrified. She was on adrenaline. Yeah. She was on fumes, but she was still moving she was still working working out the situation she was going see and the only reason why um i put her on the list to talk about is because you know she may be popularity and uh jt's wife yeah but she can get down with the horror and she was in blade too oh 
that's she, right. She was in Blade 2, where she was a vampire hunter. See, okay, she's yeah. done more horror. Because yeah. I want to I wanna say I, I remember her in some other horror films, but for them to come to my mind, and I didn't do fully, like, full-on research on it. <laughs> and then she was also in another one, which I was disappointed, but she was perpetuating the legend of the movie and it was just i'm sorry it was disappointing but she her character was was really good so yeah jessica beale is a more popular one barbara Steele. okay from the 60s we got iconic classic here from the 60s uh mostly worked with uh all the italian horror mario bava being the top of the list she was uh she had played both sides of the fence. She was the victim. And then in other movies, she was the monster. I mean, I still, this, I still use this line every time it's starting to get hairy at work. Mm -hmm. I always go, they're coming to get you, Barbara. (laughs) Wrong wrong movie, (laughs) but okay. (laughs) But I, I picture, I know it's wrong movie, but I picture her when, you know, Mm. things start to get hairy at work. Because she would be, she would play the victim, the early victim, where she screams, she's helpless, she's defenseless, she's always pursued. And then in Sp- other skirt, movies, skirt, yeah. ripped pantyhose, boobs hanging out, cropped <laughs> blouse, <Yeah. laughs> must up hair, messed up hair, but she still um, looks gorgeous. Yeah, but um, but she's definitely iconic because she's, she yeah. started what you said in the in the sixties. Yeah, where horror 60s. is. Was still fresh. Still fresh yeah. and still... And uh, she's worked with Mario Bava, Federico Fellini, Volker Schlondorf, and David Cronenberg. Okay, I only knew David Cronenberg out of all those. I'm like, who the fuck are these people? Mario Bava? Yeah, okay. <sighs> Give me a film. Castle of Blood. Oh, shit. All right. I knew David Cronenberg. Yeah. He's a horror show in itself. Yeah, well, he's from Canada. (laughs) So anyway. Don't know what that means, but I'll laugh. Okay. So yeah, there you go. Okay. I have Debbie Rochon. Debbie Rochon, yes. If you've skipped Tromeo and Juliet or Slime City Massacre, you've missed out on one of horror's most underrated performers, who has appeared in hundreds of movies and was inducted into the B-Movie Hall of Fame in 2004. Mm -hmm. So I am quite familiar with her, actually, thanks to you, Bane. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, But um, yeah, definitely. From the 80s and 90s. I mean, totally. You were like, you are the b movie like fan Mm -hmm. i mean Mm -hmm. although we can't tell by the hundreds of vhs and (laughs) dvds that we have in our house (laughs) but your knowledge is unsurpassing (laughs) but yeah i definitely thought that she needed to be added in because no i mean hundreds literally she's been in hundreds of b movies so she would definitely be under iconic okay I would put her on a co- hundreds of B movies. Yeah, it's from the eighties, eighties and nineties, eighties and nineties. But still, she was in hundreds. But she started her work with Lloyd Kaufman. Well, and that's my ultimate. Yeah. Uh, like, she's I, a traumaphile. I am a, such a traumaphile. Traumaphile. <laughs> traumaphile. <laughs> like, it would be such a bucket list to meet Lloyd Kaufman and just stare at him. Oh, you didn't see my picture of him? Yeah, I know you met him. Yeah. Yeah, I I would love to just meet him just to stare at him and really creepily (laughs) maybe get in one of his films (laughs) that he's not making anymore. (laughs) Oh, he still is, actually. Well, yeah. (gasps) Whatever happened to To Faye Ray? Ray. (laughs) Come on, we got to put her on. She's iconic. So yeah, Faye Ray, mostly known for the 1933 King Kong. Yes. She was... One of the originals. Um, I mean, nineteen thirty-three. Thirty-three. Yeah, she probably started it, and uh, she was in also uh, Doctor X. She shrieked her way through, mind you. Yes, yeah, sh- yeah. She was the ultimate victim. She never really played a badass, but she was everybody. I mean, look, she's so beautiful. She's gorgeous. She's so beautiful, and yeah. So, mystery of the wax museum, the vampire bat. She played in the early, early, early. We're talking thirties and forties, right? Uh, horror films to where she was always the victim, the damsel in distress, 
the monster's prize. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and she had lungs. <laughs> right. She had some lungs. She did it right. Yeah. She seemed to scream and then faint. So. <laughs> yeah. But that was okay because she's absolutely gorgeous and delicate. Um, I have on here a Canadian actress called Alicia Cuthbert. Yeah. <laughs> so she got an early start in horror appearing on Are You Afraid of the Dark as a child. She made notable appearances in House of Wax and Captivity, which was embroiled in controversy due to questionable billboards that appeared in L.A. and New York. So she actually started out in horror as a child. Mm -hmm. So I thought she definitely yeah. deserved definitely a, 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 um, a place on the list here. Linnea Quigley. My favorite. Oh, my Linnea God. I Quigley. love her so much. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I, yes. We chat on Twitter. <laughs> oh, I bet you do. We no, chat on I, Twitter. The first time you ever showed me, um, what was that one? Sorority Babes in the Slime Bowl around? No, no. They, she has a goth best friend, and they get this mansion to throw a party. Oh, and she Night puts of the, the Demons. She puts the lipstick in, in her, her boob. boob. Night of the Demons. Not on it or in her bra. In literally pushed it in her yeah thanks to her then uh fx husband that was the first movie that bane was like this is the Le liana quigley and i'm like oh, she yeah. rocks because she was such a punk rocker and she yeah. her acting style kind of like reminds me of um what's her name from those twilight movies Kristen stewart yes they've got that same kind of like uh, 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 uh. But man, yeah. when it comes down to like total kick ass, dirty bitch, like, that was sor sorority babes in the slime bowlorama, where she was the punk bitch. Yeah, but yeah, in uh, Night yeah. of the Demons, Night of the Demons, that I love that yeah. she was such a like you know mean girl. Yeah. Oh, that I like that movie. I yeah. really like that movie. We watch it a lot. We watched it a, a lot. lot. Oh my a god! Lot. And she's one of the iconic or classic from a lot of the 80s and 90s B-movie horrors. She's made a niche in the B-movie horror list. She's... Uh, oh, yeah. She's got to yeah. be the queen. I mean, look of, at this list. I mean... I can't even go through this list. Look at this. Yeah, I mean, there's got to be, like, Debbie Rashawn. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, yeah. They all started but I together. Would, yeah, but I would say Leanna Quigley was probably the... The queen of B. Yes. Yes, she was. I mean, there's no surpa surpassing her. Yeah. I mean, she's done. Uh, I mean, a lot of everybody knows Sorority Babes and Sly Bolorama. Um, Nightmare's Night, Night of the Demons. Night of the Demons. Um, Silent Night, Deadly Night. I think it was three where she gets killed, of course. Um, what's another one? <laughs> Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers is another classic. Everybody loves it because she was naked, but she was painted. Right. So you you could still see her boobs, through, you know, because that's what she was mainly put in these movies for was for her tits and her ass. Yeah, no, she had a great set of tits. She had a great set she of tits. She had a... And uh, such a hard ass. You can bounce pennies off them. I'm a tit girl myself, but she had a great set yeah. of tits. Yeah, that's what And she... they were always out. <laughs> yeah, because that was her signature was that they wanted her in because of her tits. So... <laughs> and she wasn't ashamed. I no. mean, she was not ashamed. She got no. the she got the check for it, though. Yeah. Yeah. So she's still uh, she's still active. She's doing the convention circuits right now. And she talks to her fans. I, I talk to her on Twitter. Of she's, course you do. She's very nice. I'm trying to get her on the show, but she hasn't said yes yet. But I'll keep working at it. Because Linnea Quigley. Ooh! Right? Yeah. So I have Marley Shelton. Shelton was the star of the one of the most ridiculous post-scream films of the th 2000s, the wildly misguided slasher Valentine, and she appeared in both halves of the Grindhouse Double Bill, Planet Terror, and Death Proof. Oh, yeah, Valentine. Yeah, Valentine. Valentine. <laughs> uh. Uh, but, you know, the Scream, the... Are these the parody ones? No, Planet Terror and Death Proof, they no. were Grindhouse. But yeah, no, she's she's pretty good. She's pretty good. No. But anyways, yeah, definitely. No more dead bodies for daddy tonight. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, Catherine Isabel. Yes. <laughs> mostly known for Ginger Snaps series. Yeah, she was so good. And uh, then she was in Freddy vs. Jason. Yes. You know. But I'm sorry, she killed it in the Ginger Snaps. Yes. Like, I, she really turned that character into something. But um, I loved how her, her character was always like, you know, with the, the suicide thing. And it was fake. Yeah. Oh, she was in Carrie? The remake of Carrie. Oh, okay. Well, not the remake, but the sequel that was supposed to be a remake. Was that with Chloe Moritz? Chloe? No, Grace? no, no. That was another one. It was, um, no, it was the one with Angela Bettis. Oh, okay. Angela okay. Bettis, okay. Right. Right. Uh, the girl in the photographs. Yeah. I didn't see that, but I, I've seen a lot of the trailers and I was like, holy smokes. And then the most popular thing she's done is American Mary. I... Where she uh, was a uh, surgeon, alert. a surgeon, a surgeon student, a surgical student who gets violated by her professor. So she turned her uh, school knowledge into a profitable venture by doing unsanctioned surgeries for people who wanted, uh, you know, body modifications. Oh. And that's how we meet the Soska twins. They were the ones she kept surgeries, doing surgeries on. Oh, well, so um, I haven't seen it. American Mary. We'll have it's, to watch it. It's awesome. Because I really, I really do appreciate Catherine. So, I mean, and, and that's time. American Mary, where she starts off as the victim and then turns it around to where she's the badass uh, getting revenge. So, um, Catherine Isabel, she's one of the newer Scream Queens. She... In some movies, she does play a victim, and then other movies, she's a badass. So it's another one. Really awesome. I have Ashley Lawrence. <gasps> oh! <laughs> if you don't know who Ashley Lawrence is, and I am not even a horror fan, but I know who Ashley Lawrence is, then you don't know horror. Yeah. So, of course, one of the biggest scream queens of the slasher era, Lawrence became a household name as Kirsty. Kirsty Cotton. Come to daddy. Uh, fighting the <laughs> nefarious pinhead over the course of the first three installments of the Hellraiser series. She returned to the never-ending franchise with 2002's Hellraiser Hellseeker. Mm -hmm. Like, she did it all. She mm -hmm. was the scaredy cat scream. Mm -hmm. She was the pissed off scream. She was the revenge scream. Mm -hmm. I mean, she really, I mean, she has these facial. I think what it's good about her is her facial expressions. Like, yeah. she would do a lot of facial expressions where you're like, oh, shit, shit's going down. Yeah. <laughs> like, she was good at that. But, um, yeah, she was good. Yeah. I I'm sorry. She made that character iconic. Yes. Like, the character alone. Because Pinhead was after her and always mentioned her in the other series, always, in the other movies. Always. Always. Men yeah, she's always mentioned because she's the one who got away. Yeah. Got away completely. Yeah. Without having to go to hell or anything. Yep. So, yeah. Yes. Yes. And this is a sad one because uh, she's also passed away. Betsy Palmer Ooh. from the first Friday the 13th. Yeah. She was known as Jason's mom. Yeah. Who kind of went a little crazy getting revenge for her boy. Well, I'm sorry. As a mother myself, dude, that revenge is like built into your DNA. Yeah. Like, and if it's not... <laughs> There's yeah. something wrong with you. So, um, she also did, uh, she was Friday the 13th and also part two as, uh, flashbacks and also, um, kind of like, what is it? Uh, her, her image was morphed over, uh, Amy Steele as she was trying oh. to see, as she was trying to, to trick Jason yes. into getting him vulnerable because he thinks he sees his mother. So her face was morphed over hers and then it would revert back. So that's when Betsy Palmer was in that. She was also in The Fear Resurrection and Bell Witch, the movie. Ooh, the Bell Witch movie. That was good. But that was uh, good. she was the most beloved, beloved Scream Queen because of the fact that she did it under a mother, yeah, a motherly type. Yeah, every, everything, all these movies that she's been in has always been a motherly. Or she did it so well. Yeah. She's got the face for it and the mannerisms yeah. for it. I mean, she so, really. So she was the most beloved, and 
more so now because she has passed on. Yeah. So, Betsy Aww. Palmer. We'll see you on the other side. <laughs> I know that you're friends or semi-friends with her, but you have not mentioned her yet, so I'm going to. Tiffany Sheffield. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> Why did you put her on your list? I oh. thought you'd grab her up real quick. Oh, my God. So, I, I know you guys talk and stuff. Yeah. But this is another queen of B-movie cinema. Including one of the Sharknado movies. Uh, yeah, I yes. I have not dedicated myself to watching more than the first one like you have. <laughs> yeah, I watched them all. <laughs> watched them all. But Shepes is a fan favorite in the horror community and a frequent screamer in sci-fi and straight-to-DVD classics like Scarecrow, The Toxic Avenger 4, which I'm sorry, it's a trauma film. I love it. Yeah. Um, Bloody Murder 2. And uh, she's done many others. Oh, yes. She got her start in a total low-budget horror film. Well, and I course. was there at the start. Um, it Oh, she played uh, an infected... She played a creature. Okay. Who was an infected uh, scientist ah. who turned into this creature. And she had this big metal mouth. Ooh. That's how, and she had these big metal claws, and that's how she was killing people. I mean, it was it was kind of a shitty movie, but her character, the monster character alone, she went full nine on. Well, I think and, also with what she's done with her career, yeah. she's made it to actually being a fan favorite. Yes, B movie queen. Yes, well, mostly because uh, she started off at the total low budget independent independent films. They wanted her in it because. I mean, she's absolutely gorgeous. She's drop she's dead gorgeous. Absolutely but she, gorgeous. I mean, I don't and know her on a personal level, but she seems like she would be very personable too. She is very personable. Um, that's why fans really love her because she does the convention circuits Aww. and she takes time to take pictures with people. And uh, I got to grab her butt, <laughs> <So> <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yeah, she uh, she's. Mostly got her start with these low budget films because so she worked her she, she worked, worked the, the literally ladder. from the bottom the bottom and up and now she's made it to where she can uh, pick and choose projects and she even and her daughter is now starting a film career she was in uh, Tales of Halloween Aww. where uh, she played <laughs> a kid getting revenge. So, nice one. At, uh, so mommy, mommy's at, done well. At uh, mommy was mommy was in it as uh, these people that were uh, kidnapping kids and killing them and torturing them. Wow. So her daughter got revenge on these group of friends. Oh well, I <laughs> so, yeah. I knew I'd snatch her up before you, but yeah, yeah. So Tiffany Shepis is a total fan favorite because everybody she is well loved. She's. Uh, she plays those characters and, too that you can get with. And the I thing mean, is, get down with. her characters are never weak or, or like girl. You know, the weak characters. She doesn't play weak characters. She plays kick-ass characters. Nice. I mean, uh, I can't remember the name of the movie, but she basically had a giant crossbow. She was in a mini skirt and a little tube top. That's but she had that crossbow. But she had the crossbow, <laughs> and she went after the killer. So yeah, nice. Yeah, that's Tiffany. Okay. Allie Larder. Oh, yes. Yes. Allie Larder. She's like one of those morphing kind of actresses, too. Yeah. She, yeah. Yes. So she started off on uh, Final Destination. Yes. Final Destination, Final Destination. Was that her first horror? So, uh, actually, she started on House on Haunted Hill. Mm, That was a good one. Uh, She was a party crasher pretending to be someone who had been invited. Mm -hmm. But she proved that she was uh, capable and wasn't the typical uh, weak flower because she was rewiring the lighting in uh, the haunted house. She was a badass that didn't mind tripping you (laughs) to get away. But yes. And then, uh, then Final Destination to where she was played the teenage, not quite weakling but you know she helped figure it she out she helped figure things out she was part of the brains mm-hmm. behind it then she was in resident evil extinction yes as claire redfield wow claire redfield and claire redfield is a kick-ass character she's like one of the main kick-ass 
female characters. Yes, yes. next to like the Mila's. original, next to Mila's. Yeah, and she was also in uh, Resident Evil Afterlife, Resident Evil: The Final Chapter. Uh, she got into the later Resident Evil movies as Claire Redfield because right. of the game. So, um, yes. Allie Larder. She was kind of like the little teen teen scream, and then now she's a big girl. <laughs> she's a big girl. Big girl badass. Big girl badass, yes. Well, nice segue into uh, my next character for <laughs> Resident Evil, Mila Jovovich. Yes. There might not be one actress more associated with a franchise than Jovovich and the Resident Evil series, which has put the actress through a seemingly endless clash against the Umbrella Corp. And it's various zombies over six films. After 15 years of kicking ass, Jovovich brought along her then nine-year-old daughter ever for a turn in the final chapter, putting her through two years of training before appearing in the film. Mm -hmm. I mean, she... <clears throat> Mila is the action star. I mean, not yeah. only is she drop-dead gorgeous, her yeah. eyes are piercing, yeah. her accent is amazing. Yeah. I mean, she definitely can, can go from that frightened, scared little character to badass bitch that you don't want to rock with yeah. at the end of the movie or series or whatever. Yeah. Um, she really has got to be up there with, um, you know, like they said, no one can be more attached to a franchise than, than Mila and Resident Evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was in almost all of it. Yeah. yeah. And plus, I mean, who doesn't, I mean, not to go off topic, but who doesn't still to this day quote Fifth Element <laughs> quotes? Yes. yes. <laughs> they know it's a multi-pass. Yeah. <laughs> multi-pass. They know it's a multi-pass. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I definitely had to make sure, and I'm surprised you didn't steal her from me, because you know how much I adore Mila. Well, that's why you got it. As a, well, you're nice. What the heck? That's why you got it. What the heck? You're too nice. I stole yours. <laughs> stole a couple of yours. Oh. Heather Langenkamp. Ooh, yes! Heather Langenkamp. Oh my goodness. Again, if you don't know that name. Yeah. Night the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes! Where Nancy had been a victim, but she fought. She fought and fought to stay alive. And then she trained. She tried training others. And then, yeah. To stay alive. And then she was in Wes Craven's new nightmare, playing herself, Heather, who had to be Nancy to fight Freddy. Because they brought him back for yeah. real. Yeah. So uh, she's also... A current woman in horror all the time because she and her husband have a special effects company oh. and they do special effects together so that's her n new job she doesn't do so much she still does some acting but she does more fx work okay so i had to put this woman on here because i started out as a fan of hers when she was just doing indie films and then she went to do some horror. That's Lily Taylor. Yes. She's got that voice. Yes. She's got that that voice and that mannerism about her. But um, when she turned to doing horror, um, I think the first inverted quotes uh, horror movie I saw was... Um, the is Haunting? That, no, the one with Liam ne Nielsen. The Haunting. The Haunting. Okay, yeah. The Haunting. Yeah. Where she was playing in like a ghost movie. I mean, it didn't seem like horror to me, but there were scary parts in it. Yeah. And I think that's for me when I started seeing her as a different light. But then she goes on um, to be a staple in horror films over the years with memorable turns in The Addiction. Which that's a vampire film. The Conjuring. Yes. Yes. And Leatherface as the matriarch of the cannibalistic chainsaw she, family. They did the like the prequel backstory of Mama Sawyer who birthed Leatherface. And that was her, yeah. that was her, uh, her part in it. All right. I got to not quite meet her, but she let me take her picture at convention. I got to meet her when she was in town in 1985. I have oh, a picture. I have a picture with her out on location at the library here in town. Yeah. She's wearing a blue dress with these All like right. patchwork. Terror at London Bridge. Yes. Yes. I got to talk uh, with her and meet I her. I didn't get That's to meet her. That's why she had to be on this list. Oh, uh, yeah. 
So everybody knows Adrian Barbo. You better she, know her. She was once married to John Carpenter and was in a lot of his films uh, and also worked with uh, George Romero. You know, we know her from the original Fog, Swamp Thing, Creep Show, which is like the <coughs> best. Creep Show the is the best, iconic. Because she was not quite a scream queen, but just a bitch who needed to die. <laughs> but she did it so well. Yeah, yeah, she did. Billy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then uh, Two Evil Eyes. Uh, she was also, wasn't she in Rob Zombie's uh, Halloween remake? Cameo appearance? Oh, yes, that's right. That's right, but you don't quite recognize her. <laughs> I, true, true, yeah. but but you know most of her uh, work as a, a scream queen was definitely in the iconic era of eighties and nineties. Yeah. I and, mean, and now she mostly does uh, conventions. Well, she she does conventions, but she also does like independent and some low budget films now. And wasn't it before this she started at like soap operas and daytime yeah. drama TV stuff? Yeah. Well, she was in. She was the daughter of Maud in Maud series. Oh, back in the seventies. Oh my goodness. Okay, so yeah. she she got her start of being a yeah a badass. Yeah. So Adrian Barbeau. She in and most of the the movies that she's been in, she's been um, except Terror at London Bridge where she was the victim. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but she mostly takes on the. Um, She's like the woman who knows. Well, remember she was in that uh, carnival. Carnival. She was the snake charmer. She was the snake charmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, she is totally iconic, legendary. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you go through the movies that she's been in, you'd be like, "Holy smoke!" Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I I got to meet her. Oh, and she's also an author. I'm reading one of her. She's writing vampire stories. Ooh! I have I have two of her books I'm reading on Kindle. Well, that's the thing with these yeah. these scream queens is a lot of them have been models, singers, authors, yeah. so, you know, some core, kind of artist as well as their their art of being a scream queen. Yes, you just have to research one that you like. So check her out. Check her out. Okay, I have to. I had to put her on here because of the fact that I've known her before going to horror. Mm -hmm. I watched her in a lot of those daytime TV shows and um, you know things like that. But Shawnee Smith, I got to meet her. Of course you did. I got to meet her. She <laughs> held my hand. Oh, she held your she hand. She held my hand because oh. we were doing this, and then we got distracted. We still Just held, kept held hands. Held hands, and I'm like trying to. Why would you? <laughs> And Isn't then her wrist was this big. Yeah, but didn't you say that she was really short? She was really short. Like how short? Like compared to you, because you are, I'm five foot two. She's literally under five feet. Oh, geez. she was wearing platform wedges to look me in the eye. But she doesn't look like it on the film. Okay, oh, so anyway, Shawnee Smith. <laughs> what is she in? What is she in? Okay, Shawnee Smith. Um, uh, trying to keep track of how everything fits in the Saw franchise. One element was Smith, who appeared in seven of the eight films, eventually being re revealed as one of Jigsaw's main acolytes. And she's also in part of the Scream Queens, the series. Yeah, she she hosted the first season of the VH1's reality series Scream Queens, yeah. which saw aspiring actresses competing for a role in the Saw franchise. Yeah. And she's also in uh, the remake of Carnival of Souls, oh. where she sings. She actually is a singer. So she she's not only an actress, but she's a a, a musician, singer, musician as well. See what I'm saying? A lot of these, a lot of yeah. these actresses are not just actresses. They're okay. Kate Beckinsale. Okay. Gotta, gotta put her on because you, yes. of the types of movies she does. I mean... She's mostly in the Underworld, underworld. franchise. Yes, yes. And uh, to where she's Celine, she's uh, she's a badass vampire character. She totally, <laughs> she totally kicks, literally kicks ass. I mean, she was also yeah. a badass in Van Helsing, too. And Van Helsing, yes. But uh, Vacancy, she was more a victim, mm, but then was, that was... Had, she had to be pushed to be a survivor. Yeah, that was a that was a sick movie. That I mean, I sick. I literally watched yeah. that movie like like white knuckling my couch. Yeah, it was it was terrifying. It was yeah. Because it 
actually happened. It actually still happened. It's yeah. So I have yeah. problems delivering to. I'm getting uh, goosebumps. I know. <laughs> Just for I actually deliver to a lot of hotels where I'm like, okay, this could go. It's a badly, badly. badly. <laughs> But then she's also been playing in some, uh, like the Stonehurst Asylum, where she's a, a patient in this asylum that's really sketchy. Was she the one that wasn't really supposed to be a patient? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but Kate Beckinsale, she's mostly put in the strong, kick ass. I mean, roles. come on, the leather, yeah. the leather suits she wears. The leather a lot of them. corsets. I and mean, she looks good in vinyl. <laughs> well, she looks good in vinyl kicking your ass. Mm. <laughs> let's literally let's, let's put that out there. Literally, she, you could she could come up behind you and kick your ass six feet in the air. So yeah, all in a leather, all in leather, leather leather suit <laughs> with a corset, and you'd love it. Well, you'd be unconscious, but still, you'd, you'd love, love it. it. So that's a little bit of, I mean, there is still tons and tons and tons of Scream Queens that we haven't mentioned. There's a lot of new ones that are mostly in the new re, in the remakes of the horror movies, which piss me off. But these women still do amazing work. Yeah, I mean, it, we could keep this list going on forever and be here yeah. for the next three days, but you two listeners yeah. would get tired of us. Yeah. But yeah, definitely much appreciation goes out to these these queens making their way through screaming. Um, definitely the pioneer scream queens that have changed the role from candy from, eye from, from candy, victim from, from victim, victim to victor. Yes. Um, definitely appreciate all that these women bring into a film mm -hmm. because, you know, as they say, no man can be an island. As they say, behind every great monster is a Scream Queen. Well, that wraps up another episode of EMZT Radio. Thank you, Miss Brittany, for sitting with us today. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk about let's talk about some more of your stuff you've done. Uh, okay. I haven't seen this the one one of these movies, but it sounded so yeah. interesting. Don't fuck in the woods. <laughs> I mean, you haven't seen it. It's streaming places now. Yeah, like yeah. where? Where can I find it? Um, you can find it, I believe, on. Voodoo, Amazon Prime, those ones. Man, he had a list. Oh. I'll send it Is to it you, but I know the list for sure. Okay. And it's available to buy on Walmart and Target.com, I believe. Oh. So it's definitely available a few places. All right. Yeah, because, uh, you know, that's not giving away a story there. <laughs> no, not at all. I don't know how people buy in that one at all. No, no. <laughs> oh, have you ever noticed? Have you ever watched the Friday the Thirteenth movie series? Um, man, I'm gonna get a lot of shit for this, but I've seen the first one and the second one. Okay. Well, really anyway, true. as the series goes, you know, Jason is punishing the teenagers for you know drinking and doing drugs and having sex, but I always notice he waits until they have sex before he kills them <laughs> instead of like. <laughs> But then, uh, what was it? I think it was, it was part two. Remember uh, the guy in the wheelchair and one of the ladies, they were about to have sex or they were, they were trying to prepare for it and he killed them <laughs> before they got to it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like he killed the guy in the wheelchair and, and he didn't, the guy didn't even do anything. And the girl, she was just in her underwear. And <laughs> <laughs> So, I didn't watch that one. I don't even remember that part. <laughs> Thanks for yeah. accurately describing my sex life, Bane. I really appreciate that. It's all over the podcast now. Great, wonderful. Thanks. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. So Jason is the ultimate punisher. I just love how all these other uh, horror 
te- the teens going into the woods and there's always something out there to punish them for their sins. I just love it. <laughs> you did. Yeah. Like guys might get you. <laughs> so it's just, isn't it funny? Have you ever noticed that horror is like the only genre of movie that judges people and punishes them accordingly? <laughs> that is true. Yeah, horror. <laughs> horror is very judgmental because it has all these rules about you know, don't have sex, don't go around naked, don't show your boobies, uh, <laughs> don't don't don't, 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 party. Don't, drink, don't do drugs, don't be mean, don't be a killer, <laughs> you know. All that. And I I just noticed I I did a whole uh, episode about horror movie rules and it's just. Mm-hmm. And and now the new the new horror all those rules are out the window because everything is up for grabs. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, it used to be, virgins were safe, the truly innocent were safe, but they're not. They kill kids. They kill people that haven't <laughs> had sex before. They kill somebody who hasn't done drinking or drugs. I mean, everybody's everybody's dead. <laughs> I think maybe that way it's more. I don't want to say like devastating because it's like, what? These guys, maybe they deserved it, but these guys, they definitely did it. Why did you kill them? Yeah, like especially the, the children. Uh, yeah. I've noticed yeah. children are getting nail- killed a lot more in the like zombie movies or uh, right. you paranormal. Know, like, come and like save them last minute or something. Now there's no one to save the children. They're yeah. just, yeah. Well, it, it used to be innocence was its own protection. Yeah. <laughs> Not more. But, Everybody yeah. dies. Everybody dies. <laughs> but the dog will live. <laughs> no, not all the time. I like, know. Like the horror movies I watched, the dog side, I found sound probably like a horrible person, but that devastates me more than the people. <laughs> Oh no no we were di- we were discussing this at another episode. Uh, how it's more upsetting when the animals die. Really is. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, don't kill that five-year-old. But, oh, my God, I'm crying because the cat got murdered. <laughs> well, like, if you think about it, maybe the next step down from innocence, apart from being a child, is, like, being an animal, like a dog or a cat, you know. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, right. yeah in one of the Halloween movies, the kittens were almost killed, too. Oh. I usually am just like, nope, tell me when it's over. Yeah. Yeah, stuff. Oh. <laughs> so, um... So what were we, what were we gonna discuss, Matt? Mm. Come on, Matt. What were we gonna discuss, Matt? Uh, okay. <laughs> About yeah. Um. Actually, no. I, oh yeah, yeah. Now I remember. There's um a debate we wanted to bring up. We're gonna bring this up on Twitter as well. But I'm gonna get both of you, you, you ladies' opinions on this. Ultimate horror doll, Chucky <laughs> or Annabelle? <laughs> nice. That is- you know, I just I like the Annabelle doll better. Um, yeah. I yeah, yeah. I was gonna say because Annabelle, because she is demonic, yeah. she she will she has a, a longer life because she is demonic. So where Chucky, <laughs> Chucky's just a serial killer. Yeah, is spiritually inside a doll, which is like a vessel. And uh, he, he, the doll can be destroyed, and then it's rebuilt, and he comes back. So he's not demonic; he's just e- evil. It's like yeah. either way, evil still never dies. I mean, Annabelle, she's demonic; she's not going anywhere, and she she does more she does more chaos and mayhem because she is demonic because she has more influence. Yeah. Toward Chucky is like a taunter. <laughs> he was like, and then he he makes you do something stupid and he kills you. I mean, just yeah. <laughs> No, I'll, I'll be honest. Annabelle. Where Chucky lost it for me was, and I know I'm probably the only professional wrestling fan that's, that, that's on this podcast right now, but <laughs> there was, oh my God, there was this, there was WCW back in the day. I think this is when Child's Play 2, Child's Play 3, I can't remember, was coming out and they did, they did a skit with one of the wrestlers called Rick Steiner and it was just so bad 
And I have not been able to watch Child's Play the same way ever since because it was just so awful. It screwed me up completely. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. What was that? Two or three? Yeah. That was, I remember two, that. It was like 1998, I think, is when this went. Three. So that, yeah, okay. Yeah. I can't remember yeah. half the time. I can't remember 20 minutes ago. <laughs> So yeah, Annabelle, because she can do more influence because yeah. she is demonic. Yeah. And I just got to like the here to your vibes from her anyways and her like character as far as that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, plus yeah. she doesn't really, she doesn't really speak. Yeah. So that gives it more. She's just like is there. <laughs> or, or, or. Or what she does before, she leaves notes, and that's even creepier. She puts slides of notes under the door. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To where Chucky, Chucky, he's just like a little shithead, you know? <laughs> it was like spooky. It was just like, oh, man, that sucks. That's shitty. <laughs> Whereas Anvil doll was like, man, that's really fucked up what she just did. So. Yeah. yeah. Did you see, did you see Anna, Cr- Annabelle Creation? Which one's the one with the kids where they're out in the... That's the second one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the last one that I've seen about with Annabelle. Yeah. It's like her backstory of how she came to be. No, I haven't seen that one yet. Uh, yeah, that's the second one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. Annabelle. And, oh, yeah. And the real Annabelle is in the Warren Occult Museum. Yes, behind yes. glass, behind glass, getting holy water blessings like once a month. <laughs> I was like, does glass matter though? Well, it's because they can bless it with holy water and they have a priest. But yeah, it's supposed to help contain the evil. As long as nobody touches it, nobody makes fun of her, it's cool. <laughs> uh, did, did you hear the stories of what happened when there was a, a, a couple that were there and the the boy... He was making fun of Annabelle, trying to taunt her, and then like he was oh killed in a god. in a he was killed in a car crash. <laughs> so, oh my god! Yeah, yeah. Don't don't make fun of anything in the Warren Museum. It will come back and literally bite you in the ass. <laughs> well, well, maybe this is just part of natural selection. <laughs> if we don't have enough to do that, then you know, yeah. no, no, yeah, but, aren't anybody, but. Yeah. Here you go, people. Here's your life lesson. Don't be a stupid fucker. You'll get killed. (laughs) (laughs) So, Brittany, why don't we tell people where you can be found to find your uh, your films? Okay. Um, A lot of my films can be found um, through Concept Media's website. It's, I believe www.conceptmediallc.com um, well, if that's not what you meant by that <laughs> oh, I um, and then like I said Don't Fuck in the Woods is available for streaming on Vudu and Amazon Prime and you can buy it on walmart.com, target.com um, Breaking Beer my first short is available through Concept Media the website and yeah trying uh-huh. to some of mine are out, so they're not available yet. So, yeah, that's where my main stuff is usually. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I was, it was fun. Yeah. And if there's any other projects coming up, please let us know so we can have you back. Awesome. I will do that. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> and stay tuned for another episode of EMZT Radio. Uh. This is Ripley last survivor of the Nostromo, signing off.